So, Harry asks, back to that same passage, um, about page, I don't know, 442 uh, or so, 443 or so. Why? Well, why did he come back? Did you ever find out, Dumbledore? I have ideas, but no more than that. What ideas? I'll tell you when you get Slughorn's memory. And that's when Dumbledore says, from that moment on, we've never been able to keep a defense against the dark arts teacher for longer than a year. So it didn't begin with Quirrell. It began with long before that. Okay? It began about ten years after Voldemort left Hogwarts. Or when he was about twenty-seven. Okay? So we come to chapter 21, the unknowable room. Let me see if I have anything in here that I need to talk about. Um, let's see. Uh, about page 464 or so, Harry runs into Tonks um, in Hogwarts. And he asks why she's here. She says, you know, she's looking for Dumbledore, but apparently he's gone away again. Okay. Harry says, yeah, you don't know where he goes, do you? And she says, no. <clears throat> okay. That's all I want to point out that chapter. Chapter 22, After the Burial. Um, we're going to skip a bunch. And we find out Hermione passes at, at uh, Apparition. And Ron doesn't. Harry grabs his Felix Felicis. He finds out that... Um, Hagrid's upset, and he talks Slughorn to going down to see Hagrid with him. And we find out that Aragog has died. So Harry goes off with Slughorn to Hagrid's. And Hagrid buries, uh, excuse me, Slughorn buries Aragog with a wave of his wand uh, about page uh, 482. Three or so, four eighty something. Um, no, four about four eighty four. And then they go back to Hagrid's hut and they start drinking. And Harry essentially gets Hagrid and Slughorn drunk, and then he pours a little bit of the Felix Felicis and drinks it. And he starts to talk about potions, and he gets Slughorn to remember Harry's mother. 487 or so. Harry's talking about her mother. He says, uh, my dad died first. Did you know that, Slughorn? I didn't. Yeah, Voldemort murdered him, then stepped over his body towards my mom. Slughorn shudders. He told her to get out of the way. He told me she needn't have died. He only wanted me. She could have run. Oh, that's so awful, Harry. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Dad was already dead, but she tried to plead with Voldemort. He just laughed. That's enough. Really, really, man. I'm an old man. I don't need... Harry, no, I forgot. You liked her, didn't you? Liked her. Slughorn goes on. She was brave. She was funny. But you won't help her son, says Harry. She gave me her life, but you won't give me a memory? Don't say that, boy. Don't... It can help, Harry says. Dumbledore needs information. I need information. And then Harry leans into him and says, I am the chosen one. I have to kill him. I need that memory. Slughorn, you are the chosen one. Of course I am. But then you're asking a great deal. You don't want to get rid of the wizard that killed Lily Evans. 
Slughorn says, I'm not proud, but I may have done great damage that day. You cancel out anything you did by giving me the memory. In other words, Harry is saying, this is your point of redemption. This is your opportunity, Slughorn. And Slughorn pulls his wand out of his pocket, and he pulls out a little empty bottle, and he takes the real memory out. And Harry runs up to Dumbledore. We get chapter 23, Horcruxes. Okay. Harry runs up. He tells Dumbledore, I have it, I have it. Dumbledore immediately looks, pulls it out, puts it in the pencil. Harry and Dumbledore go in. And let's see here. Bottom of... 495, or somewhere on 495. Tom Riddle asks, Sir, I, I wondered what you know about, uh, about Horcruxes. See, exact same language Harry used. Project for Defense Against the Dark Arts, is it? Well, not exactly. Okay. So Slughorn says, well, okay. Can't hurt to give you an overview, of course, just so that you understand the term. In other words, uh, I could teach you the theory, that's... Well, Horcrux is the word used for an object in which a person has concealed part of their soul. I don't understand how that works, says Tom Riddle. Well, you split your soul, you see, and you hide part of it in an object outside the body. Then, even if one's body is attacked or destroyed, one cannot die, for part of the soul remains earthbound and undamaged. But, of course... Existence in such a form. Few would want it, Tom. Very few. Death would be preferable. Well, how do you split your soul? Well, you know, the soul is supposed to remain intact and whole. Splitting it is an act of violation. It is against nature. Now, keep in mind what Slughorn previously said. Part of the soul remains intact and undamaged in the Horcrux. How can it be intact and undamaged when it is a fragment of the whole? Of course it's damaged. That's why he says splitting the soul is an act of violation. It's against nature. Well, how do you do it? By an act of evil. The supreme act of evil. By committing murder. Why is murder the supreme act of evil? Murder, if you want, is essentially a combination of the three unforgivable curses. It's an imperious curse, it's a cruciatus curse, and it is ultimately the Avada Kedavra. Well, how is it an imperious curse? You're not merely substituting your will for somebody else's. You are taking their will entirely away when you kill them. How is it to Crucianus? Those were not saying. You murder somebody, it's painful. Even an Avada Kedavra, which is why they die with a look of horror on their faces. Okay. Slughorn goes on. The wizard intent upon creating the Horcrux would use the damage to his advantage. The damage of what? The damage to his own soul. Why? Because killing rips the soul apart. He would encase the torn portion of how? So, uh, uh, there's a spell. Don't ask me. I don't know. And we're never told what the spell is. We are told there is a spell that is somewhere out there. You can Google it. You can find the spell, so to speak, in the Hogwarts world, for creating a Horcrux. Do I look as though I've tried it? Do I look like it? No, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend. I'm not offended. It's natural to feel some curiosity about these things. It's natural to be curious about the hidden knowledge. So Tom Riddle says, well, okay, what I don't understand, you know, just idle curiosity. Would one Horcrux be much use? I mean, can you only split your soul once? Wouldn't it be better, make you stronger, to have your soul in more pieces? I mean, for instance, isn't seven the most powerfully magical number? Wouldn't seven 
he starts to imply, wouldn't seven Horcruxes be better? And Slughorn interrupts him, Merlin's beard, Tom. Isn't it bad enough to think of killing one person? In any case, bad enough to divide the soul, but to rip it into seven? When did Tom Riddle make his first Horcrux? It happens after this memory. Okay. But this memory has not been played, not been played for us in chronological order. He makes his first Horcrux when he takes the ring from Morphin Gaunt and then goes and kills his father. And he puts the bit of his own soul in that ring at that moment. Harry and Dumbledore come back out, and about page 497 or so, Dumbledore says, I'm sure you understand the significance of what we just heard. Harry, you think he succeeded? He made a Horcrux? That's why he didn't die when he attacked me? He had a Horcrux hidden somewhere? A bit of his soul was safe? Dumbledore, a bit? <laughs> yeah, or more. You heard what he said. Seven, Dumbledore says, as far as I know, as far I am sure as Voldemort knew, no wizard had ever done more than tear his soul in two. What wizard did that? Grindelwald? The killing of Dumbledore's mother and sister that we find out in book seven? Don't know. So, They keep talking, and Dumbledore says, Tom Riddle's diary was a Horcrux. And it's been destroyed. Harry says, I, you know, I don't understand. Dumbledore goes on and explains how a Horcrux is supposed to work. It keeps the soul safe, the, the concealed part. Okay. And they discuss, and, and Dumbledore points out, Tom Riddle, Lord Voldemort, never intended for Lucius Malfoy really to give the diary away to Ginny Weasley. He just thought he was, you know, uh, playing with fire, so to speak. But in giving the diary to Ginny Weasley, it allowed Harry to destroy that Horcrux. Okay? Go on to about page um, 500 or so. Harry um, Dumbledore speaking, and he says, you know, Dumbledore says that Voldemort told you, and you told me, that Voldemort said, I have gone further than anybody along the path that leads to immortality. That was what you told me he said, further than anybody. Dumbledore says, and I thought I knew what that meant. He was referring to his Horcruxes. Horcruxes in the plural, Harry. I don't think any other wizard had ever tried that. Yet it fitted. Voldemort had seemed to grow less human with the passing years. And the transformation he had undergone seemed to me to be only explicable if his soul was mutilated beyond the realms of what we might call usual evil. In other words, just as the actions in the magical world flow over and have repercussions in our world, the Brockdale Bridge, the hurricanes in the West Country, so to speak, the murders of Emily and Vance and such, so actions to the soul have consequences to the body. Voldemort has so destroyed and fragmented his soul that his body is now deformed. Okay? We'll pick up at that point in the next lecture.